What's going on, everyone, and welcome back to another satisfactory episode. A lot of you was wondering where was last week's episode. Bits, we we we, we missed the Sunday video. You did, but if you didn't see the uh, the community post I posted out, I was actually ill with severe bronchitis. I could not do any content that was either live streams or recording. I could not speak. I was constantly coughing my guts up. But I saw all the nice comments. I saw all the lovely um, posts just saying, get well. I am good. The content train is back. But also, Fix Miss is here. We have presents falling from the sky. We have a lot of crazy things that you can see, like Reese being added to the power poles and also some reindeer doggos. And that's going to be coming up in a very special episode pretty soon. But last time we managed to get this uh, highway created, which is bringing in the coal. And then we also need to start bringing in the iron as well. And all of that is going to be going into this building, which is going to be producing our steel. Um, so you can see the tractors coming in. And this is going to be producing the steel beams, pipes, and encased industrial beams. So let's crack on. Right, Bean? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to buy some new things. And yes, I finally got the coffee cup, which, you know, is my little favorite thing. Because now I can just sit, chill, and enjoy a good cup of coffee. Because as you know, in the last episode, we got the smarts plating that was being stored in here and the frames. And I left it running in the sink, which I've now removed. Which was, you know, I just left it while I went for dinner and just got some tickets going. And uh, yeah, we come back, spent them up. But the, the plan is now is to start looking at bringing the iron in and then start finishing off that building so we can start working on a new project, which will be to remove this whole place and take it down into this like quarry down here. So we're going to head over to the steel and uh, start making our plans okay so we've just got to the steel and i'm just wondering if we should is this a four meter it is this is a four meter foundation i'm going to replace this whole section with one meter foundations so we can because i'm thinking like of doing some underflooring, uh, and to do that we do need a bit of room and the four meters just take up a, a large amount of i don't know why i put the four meters down because for anyone that knows how i build uh, I always put one meters down unless I'm placing the four meters down at ground level to hide any clearance um, from the ground to the, the foundation. So I'm going to replace all of these with the one meter foundations. And there we go. That's the foundations done. But downstairs is going to be needing to be done as well. So I'm going to have to replace this one. Wait, did I not? Oh, I didn't replace the first two. So this needs to get done as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly remove this one. Put that there. And then grab ourselves a one meter. And place it just underneath. Like so. And then remove this one as well. So now we have a little bit of movement under here so now we're going to just going to quickly fill out this uh section here and uh, we'll have some room for some underflooring belts and also some cables and there we go um we do have this bit of um, gap here, which I suppose is not too bad. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to grab myself a small metal pillar and I might place this like down here to kind of attach this. So I'm going to remove this too and then get the small metal pillar and put that there. So it kind of joins that up and then just bring this across like so. And then we're going to do this all the way along here as well. Just so we kind of blends together with the building. I think I'm just going to bring this up by one as well. Like that. There we go. I've just kind of added these pillars under here. It's, it's a nice little touch and it's it's something that's not needed, but it, sh it just kind of blends this the, the front bit out here, you know, into the building as well. Uh, and just kind of integrates it a little bit more. Okay, so the next thing I want to look at is I want to start looking at where these coal lines are going to meet up and start going onto our conveyor belt floor, which I think if we just remove these two foundations here oh, and these ones, uh, head up onto the the floor and we have this here and i'm thinking of just removing um 
like this one and then is this a four meter i believe it is it is uh, and that one replace this with a one meter here um one meter there i don't want it to be vertical default put you there that then gives us this underfloor here access to actually you don't really need to be there and we're going to go into our walls and we're going to put down a three conveyor all there and we're just going to get some lifts and uh, get some Mark II because that's what the best size we have right now. And just put these three down here. Oh, that's a little too far. And bring these two down here just like this. And then bring these three lines and just connect them up. So I've quickly just connected them belts up. They're all done. The call is now moving along from each one. And then we need to now head upstairs. Let's grab... Um use um and then we have a bit of an access to get up but what i'm gonna do as well so here's a little oh, actually no because i don't have steel beams damn i was gonna put these ball or these uh pillars up at this ramp but i can't do it right now without um beams um which we have not unlocked um i need to remove all of these see i need steel beams to place these down um but we'll do that once the time comes but what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a door here uh, this could be our main entrance door. And we can come into it. And then there goes our call into that floor. So then we'll just bring you back across. So that will then cover this side of the, the hole up. And then we'll just get a one meter and just cover that up as well. And then if we go back under to our belt floor, we now have our call coming here. So next up, we need to look at where our foundries are going to go for our steel. Uh, and I think I'm just going to do a little straight line here because it's only going to basically do three and what i've done as well is i went out and got a couple of power slugs which are these bad boys which are these good old power slugs and then if we go into the mam uh ba -ba bam get you out am i crouched like permanently crouched hello oh, okay there we go and then if we go into uh power slugs i can actually research one of these now um, and this is going to give us the option to underclock and overclock and then we want this right here. And that's going to take us a good old five minutes. So I'll be back once this has been complete. Actually, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get this uh, done and then uh, we'll be right back. And there we go. The power slugs are now complete, meaning we can now underclock and over. Actually, let's get da -da -da -da, you unlocked as well. So we can search for you on this scanner. Uh, and we do need to find a yellow one for that one. Uh, so we can literally leave that running now. We're going to quickly throw down a uh, foundry. And we can just go through the steel recipes. And we, as you can see, we now have the steel ingots. And each line requires 45 per minute from iron and coal to produce us 35 steel ingots. Uh, 35, 45 steel ingots, sorry. Then they will go into a constructor, which will, the steel beams, require this. So, we're going to produce um, 120, and we're going to do that through under and overclocking. And what I mean by under and overclocking, if you notice down here, this panel has now been unlocked for us to use because we've now unlocked the underclocking, and we can actually change the percentage here. But for us to uh, advance this, we could go into a, well, get a crafting table real quick, and quickly make some power shards, which are uh, produced from power slugs. And this, we can actually then start overclocking our machines to give us more, uh, well, a better production rate. So, for example, as you know, one machine already goes to 100%. But if we was to put down uh, power slugs, we can then overclock this machine to give us better production. So, if we was to put this to 200%, for example, this, will, this means... This will require 90 per minute, 90 per minute, 90 per minute. But these figures will only change once there is power and the items start coming in. And then you'll be able to start seeing it. And this will give us a target production rate of 90 per minute, which is this one right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to underclock this. Because we're only capable of 120 right now because of our Mark II lines, we're going to bring this down to 89%. If we bring that to 89%, that's going to give us a target production rate of 40 per minute. So this will change to 40 per minute. 
and that will mean iron ore and coal will change to 40 as well the reason i know these will change to 40 is because this is the exact same number as this one over here so if this is sending out 45 this needs 45 it's just a simple ratio and all you're going to do is just match this target production rate here and this one will change as well so that will need 40.05 um coal and iron per minute to get this to be 40 per minute so then we're going to put three foundries down and obviously four times uh, three times 40 is 120 um so we need to put three foundries maybe uh, maybe here like this maybe maybe i don't know um we'll see uh oh god jesus that was way 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 too close way too close i'm just glad i had a full health well kind of full health uh put you down here i want you to come through there and then i'm gonna leave a gap right here and then place the reason being uh just because of the way i build this is a personal reason uh if you notice, these are, are a little bit larger and they can't go in, uh, into a full foundation. If I was to put this inside of this, you can see this side now is now coming over to this foundation. Uh, where if I give it a little bit of a gap, I can place them at an uh, interval. And I can keep everything neat and tidy. Um, so it's just a personal preference why I want to put this here. Uh, as we all, we, we all have our own way of building. And what we're going to do is now we have our first coal line to come in. So I think the plan would be... Uh, we also need to think about the iron coming in as well, um, which might come into this floor, maybe, um, but I highly doubt it because I don't want to crop my, my coal and iron lines to cross. So because that's going to be coming in through a tower, I think I'm going to do towers, uh, with, uh, matching with conveyor belts, bringing them over. And then I want to bring that through here and then split off between the other two lines as well. Um, so yeah, we're going to grab ourselves... A nice splitter um, around here. Actually, if I was to put that, no, 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 here. I'm gonna bring that here, like so. I'm just gonna bring this across here as well. Uh, somebody in the comments as well mentioned that I, for example, I don't need this splitter here. I know this, I know this, but it's just there for future. Um, preference and it just keeps everything nice and clean and my ocds going you know a little a little bit more sane because otherwise if i built that there and i was to build a belt going from there to there it, it yeah obviously that's not straight but um it's just not matching it just just for me personal preference uh that's the only reason um so i'm gonna put that there grab ourselves a mark two belt attach these up and we're gonna go going to get ourselves a mark one belt and just have that feeding into there on our nice little manifold next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our next splitter and we're just going to place this in the center of the foundation we'll take it up by three this time i'm going to do that all the way oh you just kind of skipped ahead and put you there and put you up by three and you and you by three we're going to remove the bottom two uh, and this one at all and you and you then we're going to grab ourselves in a Mark 1 belt. And we're going to attach you there and to there. This then creating our iron line. And we're just going to grab ourselves some stackable conveyor poles. And we're just going to stack them there. So it looks like that is not just floating. It's just a, it's just a preference I like to do. I don't like to have things floating, especially in my factories um, with stuff like this. It just kind of keeps it looking a little clean. It looks a bit more factory-esque as well. The next plan of action is I'm going to sort the power out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this. And as you know, we do have the underflooring. So I'm just going to... You can see the power notch here. I'm just going to bring that down. And I'm going to attach that right to the... Just like that. Okay? Um, I could push it in more if I wanted to. Because I don't mind, like, power lines clipping a little bit through the machines. So I can put that, like, there if I wanted to. And it just kind of just goes into the machine and then maybe we have a bit of an attachment there. And we're going to do that with the same on all of these. So let's grab you and just put you 
underneath. And you underneath. And then we can connect to all of these as well. This then removes the power poles from our factory. Keeps everything nice and clean. And uh, because I do like to see all my production lines. And sometimes the cables can get a little, little messy. Um, because they're all at different angles and all this kind of stuff. But if they're on an underfloor, they're nice and hidden. And you know where they are. And you know that this power line is now connected underneath. Next, we're going to get into the steel ingots. So we're just going to set the recipe for each of them. Like so. And this is also sending 40, 80, 120. Okay, so that means we do need to put two constructors down. Because if we go into here, constructors. Uh, one steel beam. It needs uh, 60 steel ingots and we're creating 120. So we need two constructors, which is going to create 30 steel beams in total. 15 in each constructor what i could do if i wanted to i could put two power shards in here and put this to 200 percent which will then this will, will go into 120 and this will then change to 30 i could do that if i wanted to if i wanted to make nice and compact and that is a good rule of thumb as well is if you do if you have a potato pc you could actually start utilizing power shards to reduce the amount of machines which will help you with your fps as well so I, I like to go for big. I like to have things on shore. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two of these down, but I need a location for them. God damn it. <laughs> How did I forget about this? I was just coming back. I was like, wait, wait. Did I really just put that splitter next to the actual machine knowing that a lift has gone in? God damn it. Ignore me. Ignore me, right? I don't want to see anything in the comments regarding that, okay? Nothing happened. You saw nothing. I could easily remove it from the edit. But because I'm a nice guy, <laughs> I'll leave it in. So I'm just going to put these in here as well. As soon as I realized, I was like, wait, did I really just do that? I had a brain for it, okay? I have them all the time. There's a reason I'm a melon. Because I'm stupid sometimes. Now I want to get a conveyor hole, put you there, and then grab a Mark II lift and connect you into that splitter right there. Come downstairs, grab myself a Mark II, and bring that into this location right here. And bring you from underneath, and grab you, and put you in there. That is then our coal sorted, ready for our, well, our foundries. Next, we need to work on our coal. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to that rock over there. And we need to, because this, I believe, is on the world grid. Did I set this on the world grid? I did. Um, so this is on the world grid and what I want to do is I want to create towers. I want to create like, um, um, kind of like a, just a, a, a tower with three, uh, three belts. Actually, it's going to be two belts, isn't it? Because we're going to be pulling in two, uh, a convey belt from two normal nodes there mixed together. But we also need to look at bringing in a limestone as well. And I do think, think if my memory serves me correctly, there's one right there. Oh, my mug dis disappeared. Oh, look, mug. No mug. Mug. No mug. Want a mug? See, I'm a magician as well. So, yeah, we're going to use that limestone. I believe that is... A, I think it's a normal. Hopefully, it's not a normal. If, if it is a normal, we'll have to find another one. But I can't remember. So, yeah, let's just... What we're going to do, because we're just going to grab this, and we're going to take this and zoop it all the way along because that is going to be the base of our tower and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab ourselves a uh where is it walls grab ourselves a window and we're just going to attach it like this and then there'll be a gap here and then we'll have a tower and we can just build across deal deal and there we go the towers are now completed it's it's a very very simple design it's just basically the pillars with the pillar bottoms and tops with the foundation on top of that and then windows going around that with a asphalt top and then i've just laid a foundation down for the miners to go on obviously the mark one miners going on to uh mark two belts these are the two pure iron nodes as well behind the big rock uh, but yeah there we go that's the tower that's going to be bringing in the uh what 360 iron 120 per line going into our steel factory and in this steel factory we've also done this as well so we managed to get everything connected up we have got the um outputs to come along this line here to go up on a lift onto the second floor and then on this side which we did go through which is all the inputs but what i've done this time is if we head underneath 
Um, I have got the two, uh, well, the three iron uh, coming in. Uh, and I've also got the coal being split off this way so there's no t uh, entanglement with the lines. So then the coal can just kind of head off that way where it needs to, and the iron can also go into its own direction as well. Um, and then on the top floor, which I th think I need to put some ladders down, I do. I need to go up here. And then I've got a, a simple little setup. So as you know, the we're springing up 120 steel ingots. And if we go into a steel beam recipe, it requires 60. So that means 60, 60 is equals 120, giving us a total of 30 steel beams per minute. But we do have three lines. So what I'm thinking about doing is grabbing our, uh, grabbing a, a pure line from there and another line from there and duplicating this to this side. So what we're going to do is everything you can see in concrete right here, everything that is in, on the concrete floor, we're actually going to grab this and duplicate it into these three spots here. And there you have it. We have now duplicated the steel, but there's something on the left. That is now our steel pipeline. It's exactly, exactly like the steel beams, but all you're going to be doing is adding two extra constructors because for the steel pipe recipe, you need 30 ingots, which is half what the steel beams need, but they are sending out 20 steel pipes per minute. So we're getting 80 steel pipes per minute on this line, and that's 30, 60, 90, 120, which is equaling 120 steel ingots we have coming up. So now we have steel beams at 60 per minute, and we have um pipes at 80 per minute so now we're getting pipes and steel beams next thing we're going to do is tackle some quartz because i need windows to complete that building but we have a slight problem that ramp you can see is not on the world grid because when we built this and built the starter base the world grid was not a thing until a week later so what i need to do is i need to rip that ramp out and then i need to put down the uh, grid for, well the world grid for the quartz and we can start working on our quartz factory because we do need silica for our um windows and we can also use the quartz crystals for signs and there we have it i've just put a foundation down and put two miners on there i'm just currently waiting for some quartz to actually uh start to come out because i need to actually put this into the mam uh, to actually start getting the materials i need to go into the mam Oh, we got, we got the uh, slug. Uh, but now if we go into quartz, I can now start researching this. And we can start working down the quartz tree. So I need to start making some um, quartz crystals here in a minute. And I want to get silica as well. Because we do have crystal oscillators there. Um, I need a couple more. Grab you. And now we can actually start making silica. So we're going to have a quick do as well. We're going to have a quick look at the recipes. Okay, so if we put a constructor down, we should now see, there we go, quartz crystals and silica. If we look into this, we can see that raw quartz uh, is, well, we need 37.5 quartz per minute to produce 22.5 quartz crystals. What I would like to do, instead of me overclocking this to 40 to put three machines down, because we have 120 belt capacity right now, um is bring this down to 30 which i believe is 80 percent and that should give us a target output of 18 per minute yes 18 per minute i think that's correct if my maths is not mistaken sometimes i can be pretty stupid but if we look at silica and uh, we'll put that back to normal um this needs 22.5 quarts per minute and 37.5 silica per minute and we need, to be honest, this to go to 20 per minute. And I don't think we can with that number. It'll be close, but it won't be 22. It won't be 20. Bang on. Um, if I was to put this to 91%, I think that will give us 34 per minute. 34.12 per minute. And I think that will go to like 22.8. Something like that. No, 20.8. 20, 20 um, but we'll figure this out when we set it all up and power comes on. So we can see the true numbers. But um, yeah, let's get these lines set up. So what we're going to do 
is wait how many how many the constructors do i need to put down for this one so if i'm gonna underclock if i'm gonna put quartz crystals onto one line i need to put four of them down and then the silica i need to put five down right yeah i need to put five down so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make this pretty simple is we're just gonna extend this foundation out here a little bit let me let me let me zoop need me zoop zoop so if we go into this side we're gonna put four down here it's gonna be one two three and four so that is gonna be set to quartz crystal and then we need to set this to 80 percent you as well and then we need our splitters Put them up with a Mark II belt in the middle. And a Mark I belt. And then we need to put our merges on. So how much are you, we, you outputting? You're outputting 18 per minute. So we're going to be 18, 36. 36 times 2 is going to be 72. So we do need a Mark II belt on this side because we are exceeding the 60 belt limits. So we're going to put four of these down. And then we're going to grab ourselves a storage bin and put this right here. Like there. Yes, that'll do. Um, and then we're going to put a Mark II there. And just put you all the way down. This doesn't need a Mark II straight down the middle. Because this is only sending out, you know, 18 per minute and then 18, 18. So it doesn't really need it until the end. Uh, but we're just going to match that. Just in case we extend later on. Which we more than li will likely when we... Uh, get mark two miners next thing we need to do is we need to duplicate this um actually let's put this because i won't be able to put another one there is grab ourselves a storage container and put you the input this way and line you up there and then can i squeeze you in there no because i need you to get pushed back one more derp mark two and then you into there so what i'm going to do now is just do exactly the same and then we're just going to duplicate what we've just built here on this side. And there we have it. We now have silica and quartz being made. I've only put four uh, quartz machine down because I just don't have the belt capacity right now. And I kind of wanted to keep things symmetrical. So what I could have done is I could have put a fifth machine down or I could have overclocked this last machine here to an extra 200%. Um, which will then output, well, uh, 68 in total. Um given us quite a lot of silica but we don't need to mass produce silica silica right now only thing we need to do it is just store it so we can grab it just so we can then start creating some windows and stuff um my maths was just off as well um i was super close i was 0.4 of a decimal off uh what i thought it was i thought it was 20.8 um but what i did instead is i changed this target number to 34 and then it gave me this uh, this percentage here instead of 91 percent uh which still give us 34 silica uh, per minute and then over here was exactly what we uh, we thought it was which was 80 percent which this is a lot more easier uh to uh calculate um next thing we need to do is we need to start looking at how we want to design this building okay it's time to now start decorating this building it's been a long overdue this well this last two episodes and uh, it's going to be something that is going to be within this save for a very long time for well until we start upgrading it and stuff as well um, but now that we have like the glass roofs we can play around with we've also got the well the flat roofs we've all got the metal roofs we then go if you go into walls now we've got the windows which is my new favorite windows which are these ones because <laughs> it's the sound you make when you walk into them because i've done it on the stream i've actually walked into this thinking it was an open thing although it is a little bit dirty and you can't tell but once you put multiple ones of these at the side uh, yeah i've done that but m my second favorite has to be these i love these two windows like i could just build with these all day so we are going to utilize the windows in this build that's why i wanted to get the quartz up because i did not want to put like just flat walls on this it's just going to look very well before update four well five so anyway you guys are going to get to see the before and after so you get to see what it looks like in three Two. What?
there we go guys that is our steel production buildings we're going to the blacks the grays the whites the oranges the yellows and the browns and the golds that's the kind of color palette we're going to be going for at this playthrough and yes that is the end of this episode so thank you so much for watching please remember to subscribe like and leave a comment and if you do want to catch me uh, over on the live streams check the description below give me a click give me a follow come on over i stream every weekday from 10 a.m for an average of about eight hours so come on over and as always i'll see you in the next satisfactory sunday video all these names you can see right here have joined the uh, membership in the last couple of weeks uh, well since we've been off so again thank you for everyone that's joined and as always keep smiling Bye.